and cinema that's what cinema's for right that's what cinema's about is it's you're creating a fantasy world you know even if you're making a documentary you're creating some sort of fantasy world so i find it to be best when it's grounded as much as possible Sesame Street was the best variety show there ever was. You know, it had this really just artistic freedom while also basing things in education and comedy at the same time going hand in hand. So that was always a really big influence. And that, those early shows are really moody. They're surprisingly an exploration in kids' emotional states in a way that you don't think about it. You think it's about the puppets, but you forget about the five-minute nylon string guitar that just says, hey, cow. And it's just like shots of cows in a field. And you get into this really peaceful meditative state and you realize, oh, this show, show is kind of expressing and showing kids how to be emotional and how to connect to emotions. And so that as a foundation all the way into like then, you know, Star Wars, which is whatever, that's like a very popular thing. Um, and then into comedy, a lot of comedies at that time. And then the first real big movie for me that kind of, changed my life you know in high school was stranger than paradise jim jarmish like seeing that movie um my girlfriend brought it home she's like i don't know what this is and i grew up in a tiny tiny town like there was the closest movie theater was probably an hour away 45 minutes or an hour away i my parents took me to three movies my whole life i barely got i barely went so she brought that and i had seen it before on pbs not the full movie and that i was like that's an option you can do that. Like, then if that's an option, I want to go towards where that is. My wife and I had a miscarriage um, and uh, my father had just passed away a couple of years before that. Uh, and he was a big influence in my comedy life. And then I was reading Peter Pan at the time. So there were all these swirling things about loss and holding on to things and like dreams and memory and all those things like that and i basically had the vision uh of the ending of the movie because in peter pan there's a section of the book where the parents the darlings are staring out the open window waiting for their kids to return and when i read that i was like that can't be good nothing good is coming from that like the, either <laughs> either the mom threw the kids out the window or they were abducted and so it really made me rethink the whole idea of peter pan and what peter pan was and then it made me really think about loss and all those things were swirling around and i basically came up with the ending of the movie that's still 90 percent the same ending and then i had to go backwards and try to understand what set that all up and what caused that what could cause you to do that as much as I, this movie's strange, I'm really kind of excited that like people TV is going to cover it. <laughs> you know, like to me, to me, I'd rather enter the basement dressed as a regular guy and destroy it from within. And I really like that. If I, if I can do that at any point in my life artistically, then that's a wild success for me. How do you wrestle the surreal and the real, I think Boonwell does the best job of that. I think I take a lot from him. My understanding of him is this, is that the surreal is, the most important part of that is the real, right? Like if you see yourself and you're in a trippy world, okay, great, I see myself, who gives a shit? But if you're at home in your kitchen and you open the door and there's you right there, that's unsettling, right? So like, I always try to make sure that the dream or the fantasy is based in a real sort of experience or a real psychology or a real way for the character, to, however they're seeing the world. And I like to then mess with that. That's up to you how you do it. And that's up to me how I do it. And that is your expression or your tone that you're looking for. But I think that's the most important thing is is to like base it in a human psychological issue or emotion and base it in reality. In cinema, that's what cinema's for, right? That's what cinema's about, is it's, you're creating a fantasy world. You know, even if you're making a documentary, you're creating some sort of fantasy world. So I find it to be best when it's grounded as much as possible. And as much as I, as Phil Pot said earlier, as much as I make weird stuff, I also really, it's also on purpose and it's like it's very simple sometimes the scenes that i'm making and it's very you know like narrative driven or drama driven 
But I think let those things guide you, the drama of the situation. 